I have written her a poem. Would you like to hear it? Yes, I think that would be appropriate. I can't believe you're dead, Pauline. I know I'm going to miss you. It's strange to think you're in this box, your penis buried with you. I think that's your pen is buried with you. <laughs> You've reached the final resting place on life's great adventure, but you probably won't remember it because you had dementia. So, after the specials aired, when did you decide that doing it live was, was something you wanted to do? Well, we always thought we would, in conjunction with, if we did ever bring it back, do some more live shows. So it was always on the cards that we would do the, the TV and then probably announce some live shows. And it was about a year. This time last before, year, Before, yeah, 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 that we, that we announced it and knew we'd then be doing it. But we didn't know how much interest there'd be, so it was quite a scary thing to do it. But we, were, we sensed from the reaction of the TV that mm. there would be fans that, have, that would be interested in seeing us back on stage again. But it's because we started live, it's always been a huge part of it, and we hadn't done, done it since 2005, so it seemed the right thing to do. How wrong we were. <laughs> <laughs> it ended up in, in a big run, in some big places. I mean, was it always that you would take it right around the country and you wouldn't just do a little residency in London, you always wanted to take it out and around? Yeah, we wanted to... Uh, we love going, you know, north of uh, Watford and <laughs> getting really good reactions from uh, fans and playing places like where we're from because you know we went to Leeds we went to Manchester we went to Sunderland um, and you and get Hull. And, and, Hull. and Hull and Hull we get brilliant responses wherever we go um, but especially you know doing those hometown gigs uh, you can't beat it really so yeah and we played a mixture of theatres and arenas which was interesting we'd never really done that before yeah we did the same show in a 400 seater in Barnstable and then in the at the O2 mm. so you couldn't have got more different although that was the biggest one we did was Manchester Arena which was eight and a half yeah hours. yeah that was big but these the O2 was quite odd it wasn't our favorite gig it was a big thing to do it but it's a big tent and it still is really and the acoustics were very strange weren't they? we all we all felt a bit there's no to like yeah. it. it was a curious gig that was couldn't get a reaction back in yeah. one block because everyone is so spread out but, but luckily we filmed it and it's on DVD <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We filmed this at Hammersmith, yeah, which is a lovely place to do it. Yeah, it yeah, why did you decide on there of all the venues? Um, it, that was out of our control, really. It was, I think, it was logistics. We and did what, it last time. There, point we, we did it last time there. Yeah, it was it's the a, last gig that we did. We did four nights in Hammersmith, and we just thought by that stage we might be close to getting the show right, <laughs> <laughs> and have honed <laughs> and got rid of all the bumps and. Uh, yeah, so we just chose it. We did it for one night only, which is really unusual. So if anything had gone wrong that night, oh, that wrong, or yeah. disastrously one of us forgotten lines or whatever, they would have been kept in. But professionals that we are, it oh, always sort of got it smoothly. Yeah. Just about. Now then, Margaret. He can't hear a word worth saying. So between ourselves, are there any little things that annoy you about him? There are, Mike, yes. <laughs> I thought there might be. He's got bad breath, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Would uh, Victor benefit from the odd tree ball, first thing? No, no, it's worse than that. It stinks like the grave. <laughs> Look, so this was the first time coming back to a lot of this material after a long time away. I mean, was it like the proverbial riding a bike, or did it take a while to get back into those characters? You know? Yeah, it was pretty quick, really. I mean, I think they'd added in a few dates for us to get back into the groove, just in case we needed to find our <laughs> rhythms. So we, we had to go and play about three weeks in tiny theatres. After the first night, we were like, yeah, we've All got right. it. <laughs> it fine we, to do we really, because we'd done the specials, that was the, that was the point at which it would have been like, oh, my God, we haven't done this for years. But actually, even then, it just felt, it literally felt like we'd never stopped. The first thing we filmed were the Benice and Merry scenes yeah. in the town hall. And it was just like we'd just yeah, done never week, been away. And, leave, and live was even more so. I mean, I think we were very nervous the first night. What show? Yeah, <laughs> we couldn't quite believe we were doing it again. But then very quickly, you just become confident with it because you, you've got you know the people are on your side, you know, and everyone was very much up and for the, it. And there's nothing like that audience reaction day. You, mean, you, you never get that anywhere, yeah, do you? Get in any play, sort of swim. You can swim through it, can't you? Yeah. Kind of, uh, just the pleasure of it, and also. You get great confidence from the from the response. It's uh, it's a lovely thing. Nothing like it really. Yeah. And were the kind of crowds as you expected? I mean, was it people who followed you for years, or, or were there plenty of you know new kind of teenagers who who would have discovered your work kind of in the years in between? I think it was both. I think there were people there that were 
was so excited to see it again and had followed us and kept it alive for 20 years. And there were people that we had people tell us that they'd brought friends that had never heard of it, never seen it, and still got a fun night out of it, just regardless, didn't they? There were some people as well who'd seen it as children but would have been too young to go to the original live shows. And now so I've never seen it alive. Yeah, so people in their 30s, like Jack Whitehall. Yes, yeah. You know, that. And the, sorry, you've dropped a name there, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and some disgusted millennials, I think. Which is always oh, nice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> not many, not many. No. Just come this way, our first port of call. This may look like the Dole office, but it was in fact the site of the old Royston Vasey workhouse, where many of the emaciated orphans starved to death. The shade of a ragged Victorian boy can frequently be glimpsed in that window via. I say frequently, I've never seen it. <laughs> Nor has anybody else. Now, having done this and, and capping it all off with the DVD, I mean, is this it for the league for, for quite some time? And have you talked about the future? Or? I'm confident of a Blu-ray of <laughs> all the series and all the specials and all the live shows, because I think that would be great. A what massive 15-inch Blu-ray. <laughs> no, a laser disc. I want a laser disc on it. <laughs> Yeah, well, we did these shows because we thought it would stop people saying, are you doing any more? But now we've done more, they go, are you doing any more? So it's like a well, Mobius probably script. won't do any more for a while because I think people might be a bit... It's not quite return if you just keep... If you stay. <laughs> so um, we might eventually do some more, but uh, there's definitely... You know, we're not, not going to do anything together again. It might not be Royston Vasey, but we'd love to do another project and work together. It was great, it was joyous. It was. It was. And away from the league, I mean, what are we all going to see you... In next or behind? Well, Steve and I are doing more of this other thing we do called Inside Number Nine, Series Five, which we start filming next year. So that's taking our time up now, isn't it? We've yeah. just finished the script, so we're ready to film, and now we've got Christmas off, which is nice. Okay. Uh, I am writing uh, a follow up film to Ghost Stories with Andy Nyman as we speak. So, fingers crossed on that. Not as we speak. Not this <laughs> second. He's not behind. Because you might be right with your bum. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm doing Draclia for BBC One next year. <laughs> it is actually Draclia. Yeah, change, change. Yeah, change. <laughs> Thank you very much. I wish it was. I never, yeah, Thank no, you. And then Frankenstein. Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, my name is Telly. Good to be. 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 Good to be.